So last week what I did was removed the masking tape that was on uh, the lily and when I took that off and there's some down here that's going to come off as well it uh, removed the masking fluid that was on some of the water uh, or they be the, the little bubbles that are in the water or, or sparkles that are on the water so I am going to go ahead and remove the rest of the masking tape Okay, so remember that if you're going to do uh, masking tape or try the masking tape to mask your painting like I did for this one, it is a good idea to test the masking tape on uh, the same kind of paper because some uh, watercolor papers don't work very well with the masking tape and they can tear. Um, let's see, I need to just have a little bit of paint that came out of over the line right here on this petal because it um, probably just when I was putting the water down I just got a little droplet of water too far out so just taking a brush a flat brush with just a little bit of water on it and I'm just kind of pushing that back and forth over that paint to lift it just a little bit and it didn't come completely off but now it will kind of blend in when I do that petal So that's cleaned up enough and now I'm going to take my masking fluid and I need or I don't need to but I want to mask the uh, stamen the yellow part of the lily in the center so that when I go to paint the uh, lily petals themselves I won't have to think about painting around that and you could paint around it if you would like but when I'm teaching a class it is um, so much easier to just actually I think I'm going to change to my other tool this is a, uh, a rubber or not a rubber cement it's a rubber tipped uh, it's called a clay shaper or a color shaper and they're they're actually used for working with clay or for um, working with uh, pastel I couldn't think of the medium um, my masking fluid that's in here that I had ready in a smaller container is starting to be uh, a little thick and I don't like working with it that thick so I'm going to get out my bottle, my bigger bottle and pour some of that into a, another container. These are just old film containers but they work well if I can get it open and um, I try not to leave my jar open for very long so that's why I put it in the smaller container because when you leave it open to the air then it will start to um, kind of congeal and um, go bad quicker this thing is just a whole batch of pieces of masking fluid that I've taken off of a painting and I make a ball from it just so that it's easy to collect it all and then throw it out at some point. Okay, close that up. And my other tool is an hors d'oeuvre pick taped to a pencil. And I just like the fact that it's got a, a nice point to it so I can get into small areas and I use it kind of on um, kind of flat like that and every now and then I'll go and do a point um, come up on the tip of it so I'm going to carefully go and mask best I can right along the edge so whenever you're using masking fluid you want to take your time and um, fill it in. It will take a little longer to dry but I would rather have it be a little thick um, or raised or pooled in that area than have it be too thin and have uh, paint get in those areas.
have all the mask on there I will need to give that time to dry so I will go ahead and uh, turn the video off and come back when that's dry and I'll do a few petals to have them ready for okay tonight. so the masking fluid is now dry and I will go in and just paint a few of um, these petals so that I have a portion of them done so that I can show the class some of the shadows and things that they can do tonight so I'm going to get out the Quinn Rose that we were using earlier. And my warm red is Parole Scarlet, but uh, Cad Red would also be a, an okay choice. There's just a few places in the center. It seems like they're getting um, light from the yellow of the stamen that is causing some warmer parts to the petals. And so I'll get out some of that. It's a very orangey red. And parole is spelled P-Y-R-R-O-L. And that should be all I need because I'm not worried about any shadows. Um, and I'm going to keep it in the kind of vibrant color range right now. So each of these petals, like I did this one, most of them look like they're wet and wet because the color is kind of soft and um, has that watercolor feel to it. So I think I'll start with this one and then I can work on a few others. And for this one, there is uh, some white showing on this portion of the petal, but I'm going to go ahead and put water everywhere. So I'm trying to be a little more careful with my edges. And with watercolor, if you're new to watercolor, wherever you place the water, that is where your paint might flow to. It depends on how wet you are working and how wet the paint is when you put it on, but uh, it will stop at the, unless your board is really tipped, it will stop at the line between the wet and the dry area. And I'm using my big brush. This is my number 20. And uh, I could go to a smaller one just because it gets a little hard to get into those little points, but right now it's okay. And I'm going to put just a teeny tiny touch of that warmer red with my pink, just so that it kind of repeats some of the same color that I have in this one. And I'm starting at the top and just touching that upper edge. And right now I'm just basically touching the uh, wet area, wet surface with my brush and just letting the color flow. You don't even actually have to stroke it on sometimes, depending on what you're trying to do. And down in this portion, it's a little pinker. I'm going to go put just a touch more up in there. And then I'll come around And I dried the back of my brush there because I want to take some of the moisture out of the brush but not take the color off. And I am just going to add a little bit of color to this bottom piece and then I think I'll leave that one. So it's got that lighter piece right up in there, and this had started to lose some of the shine. It's still a little bit shiny, so when I put my first brush strokes of color on there, it uh, didn't move very far, uh, and some of that uh, 
it happens because my brush wasn't too wet. I didn't have too much water over here on my paint, but if it started to move really fast, then I would probably pause, let the paper surface get a little drier, and then go again. Or you can also dry the back of your brush like I just did a few seconds ago. All right, so I will do this petal and there actually is on the edge of this one a place where my green, where my masking tape wasn't quite cut cleanly and the green is not real smooth here and that can kind of give your uh, petals a, a sort of disjointed look and so I just want to smooth out this edge and then I can go ahead and wet it and paint. So I'm just waking up the paint on the edge there and I'm pushing from the uh, white side of that shape toward the paint and then I can just dry that just a little bit and I can continue so I am going to once again there is a little bit of a white highlight at the very top edge of this petal so I'm going to not wet that area and then I will um, go ahead and wet everywhere else. And if you wanted to, if you saw something like that prior to painting, you could mask that area. Oops, a little bit of water there. Okay. So we're, all I'm doing right now is just applying the clear water and it can help to uh, lean your head to the side or even pick up your painting and look at it at an angle. If you're trying to get water on everywhere, then uh, doing that will let you see where it is not wet. Okay, have it in there. All right, so that is more shiny down here because it hasn't started to dry. This is a little less shiny up here. And at the top edge, I'm just going to get just a touch of my warm red with my pink again. And then at this, this uh, top part or the outside edge of this petal, I can go ahead and start applying the pigment. And um, I don't want any of this to be really dark at this point because uh, one, it's the first layer, but also because I want it to feel like there is light shining through these petals. And if I get it too uh, opaque or too dark, it can start to feel uh, like it's uh, either in shadow or that it uh, doesn't have that same glow from the sunlight. And then this side is shadowed, but I'm going to just put the color on and then I'll come back and I can add to that petal later. And as I come down toward the bottom of this, I'm actually going to take my brush. I just dried it just a little bit with my towel and I'm going to just take a little bit of that water. It had started to pool just a little bit at the bottom and uh, I'm going to take it off because I don't want it to possibly push back and cause a bloom, but also it lightens my color that I'm putting on. So just change that a little bit. Okay. And then you could switch, if you were using a big brush, you could switch to a smaller brush depending on what kind of point your brush gets. If it doesn't get a really good point like this one, you might want to switch to a smaller brush as you get down into some of those tighter angles. So don't feel like you have to uh, always use the big brush for the whole shape. Okay, so I'm going to go back up here, but it has started to dry a little bit, so I will um, dry the back of my brush just to make sure that it's dry. And not going, or not dry, but not too wet. And then I'm adding just a little bit of color up in that edge over here because it is darker, and I might as well while I've got it wet. 
Okay, so I'm going to leave that one. This will have to have another um, pass because this side over here is hard edged and it's got um, a, sh a little bit of a shadow on the outside edge of that one. And then because I don't want to paint right next to the petal I just did, we don't want the color moving, I will go to this one right here. And so for that one, I'm going to do the same thing. I will get it wet. And now we will be working around the masking fluid I put on earlier. So um, I literally will just put the water right over the masked area and paint over that area without having to worry about getting paint in those stamens or on those stamens. Okay. And then because it pooled a lot, your masking fluid acts as a, as a dam or a, a, a break and it can hold the water. And it really, the water pooled right down in here. I want to just lift that just a little bit so that it's not too wet. All right, so I've got that petal all wet and I'm going to get some more of my Quin Rose out because I have been using it quite a bit. And just a little bit of that warm red with it. And this one, it has a little bit of color on the edges. And you can see it moving in toward the water. And then it has a big center area that doesn't have very much color. And I want to go ahead and let a little bit of that color very lightly into that area. But I don't want to get too much in there because I want to keep it mostly white. And those variations in value, that lighter value compared with the uh, darker values that we'll, we will be putting on will help uh, make it feel like it's glowing from the sunlight. Okay, just a little bit in there. And I'm going to just pull up a little bit of that moisture again. And then I think I'm going to go back and add a little more to this one on this edge. Actually, it's a little warmer. Everybody sees colors differently, so don't feel like if you're not quite seeing the same colors that either I am or someone else in the class is seeing that they have to be the same. So um, it's just nice generally for a shape to have a variety either of value or color change because it just makes it more interesting. I know there are, there are times where you want to have a um, solid color in a shape, but uh, just in general it's kind of nice to have some variety. So that's why I'm going back and forth to the warm and the cool reds. Okay, so that petal has its first um, color, and you can see this one is not quite dry, but it has dried a lot more than how I put it on. So your watercolors are going to dry uh, 20 to 30 percent lighter than how you uh, have applied them. And I think I will do um, probably uh, this one. I can't touch either of those right now, and this one is not, um, I can't do this one either because it's next to this little shape that's part of this um, petal. Let's see, so I think I'll go up to that one and maybe this one and then I'll be done so that I can show the class more this evening. Alright, so again I'm going to start with just water and uh, this one has a little bit of a edge that curls and it has a little bit of a white tip at the top. A lot of water lilies will have um, the edges of their petals that either curl just a little bit or they catch the light and they uh, can look kind of creamy or white and so I just look for those kinds of things when I'm painting them. So 
so wet on wet and I've got the area now wet with color I'm going to get just a little more pink out again and when I'm working with smaller shapes like this I uh, I could have gotten a big section of pink out on my palette but the uh, it doesn't take that much to go ahead and pull more out and I don't um, worry about matching the colors exactly as long as I'm using the same two colors having that a little bit of variety within the uh, plant itself it doesn't have to be the same um, color throughout so there's a little more red in one of them it, it's interesting com compared to another petal that might be a little pinker okay getting both colors again and I'm looking at the uh, shape of the or not the shape sorry the direction of the color on these petals because um, I don't want to necessarily be painting this way if the the shape or the texture that I'm seeing is going more vertically or diagonal diagonally so let me get a little more so that my, my color on my palette is a little drier and I'm drying the back of my brush because I can just even just touch the paper and it will pull some of that color off and make this area a little darker then. Okay, and I'll leave that and then I'll do this um, big outside edge one and I will stop there. Alright, so I probably need to pull out a little more warm red, although this petal doesn't have much of that. There is, a, again, a lot of uh, light on this one, and so I will watch for that when I go to put the color on. And I'm just painting the water on and watching my edges to keep it from bleeding into the petals around it and I there's a dark piece right here that might be part of the petal that's in front of it I can't quite tell but for now it may just be a shadow actually that's on this petal that's at the back so I'm going to go ahead and just put color on so a big part of what I do is observation and so I'm always looking, I'm not thinking necessarily this is a petal. I am thinking about how dark is that, how light is that, what is that color, and what is the shape of it. Okay, so just kind of mix those guys together. And then there's just a little bit, kind of, that's a little darker than what's there, but that's okay. And then... This one is a little uh, light, kind of at that this upper edge right there. And actually there's just a little of that same value kind of down in here. So even if you have a white shape, look to see if there's any colors reflecting um, or bouncing into it or if there's shadows on that shape. You can actually find quite a bit more color in um, white things than a lot of people think when they go to paint it. And this sort of strokes down toward the center and around that petal in front of it. And then I just want to fill this area in. And I think I'm going to go uh, back into that right quick and add just a little more color down in here because I know that it's going to dry the 20 to 30 percent lighter. And uh, by when you put water on your paper when you are doing wet and wet, you are adding water to that mix. And so I just want to make sure that I go ahead and darken that because it's going to 
dry a lot, a lot lighter and so um, that way I won't have to change it a whole lot. I may still have to go back over it but it will already be a little darker. So when you are uh, painting petals like this, don't feel like you have to put the, the color in all at once. Same thing with that we did with the lily pads where we did one wash of color and then we came back and we did another and we maybe made some changes to the color and um, then I had a third on mine where I added some, uh, there's some water that pooled on some of these or they have some shadows. And um, so when you're painting with watercolor, you can work it up in layers. So if I get these on and they're uh, too light or if I want to add some texture or something like that, I just keep adding layers. So this may just be a first layer for all of these or it may be um, good enough when when they're dry. So I will stop there and then tonight I will show the class uh, some more of the petals. I'll film that and uh, I will include it all together in a video and then like I said depending on what I get done tonight and um, how much is left to do I may have to uh, wait a little bit to get this done because I have another class I need to get ready for and um, but then I will eventually post the final video of, of the finish of this lily so um, so I'll see uh, we are now in class and I have the petals that I did earlier today those are dry and um, it's the same process that I did for this one where I did them wet and wet so I will show you again a couple more petals and then um, while those are drying, I can start adding some shadow to the ones that are already dry. So I'm using um, the quinacridone rose and my warm red, or my two reds. And there are some places where it goes pretty warm, like this petal is pretty warm. So I will do that one first. Um, so I'm going to get out my warm red, which is my parole scarlet like I said earlier, but it, for you it might be cad red. Mm. Is and this the shadow? This yeah. is, right now this is going to be just that first layer of color on the petals, so no shadow yet. Because in my notes I had Quinn Rose and New Gamboge. I'm good too. Did you? Okay, so I'm going to actually get New Gamboge out. So for this one, um, oh, for the this part of the reflection, that's what I did use, was some Quinn Rose and New Gamboge. Um, but I'm doing the petals, and so I am seeing some new gamboge in there, so I'll use some of that also. Because it's just not going to go, it's, I think it's getting some color, um, I want to say influence from the stamen that are in the middle. So I think some of that yellow is reflecting, reflecting off of, yeah, okay. yeah. So I am going to take clear water and I could go down to my smaller brush again but and then I'm just going to paint over the stamen because they are masked and I said earlier in the video that um, when you are working with a masked area it can kind of act as a um, dam and block the water and create a pool of water right there so just be careful that if you notice um, a lot of water beating up around your mast area you might want to uh, lift just a little bit of that off and so that's what I did there. Alright so um, generally when you're working with yellow, yellow should go down first because it can lose its vibrancy if you um, put it after other colors. So I am using the yellow and I left just a touch of that um, upper part of the petal without any color on it with the Quin Rose. So I got um, the New Gamboge with just a touch of the Quin Rose and then I'm going to come back with more Quin Rose on the edges. And then toward the bottom of that petal, I'm going to use some of the um, warm red with my Quin Rose because I used that on the other petals. 
Now, if you want to just use the Quin Rose and the New Gamboge, if you can, if you want to make your mix that way, that would totally work too. Oh, I see the yellow right there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's there, and I I actually want to go and put in just a little more of it because it's you can see quite a bit on this petal. Okay. So it's kind of an unusual, I don't know if it's the actual color that's on those petals on this particular water lily or if it just is because of the bounce of reflective light. All right. So that's a, a first layer. This petal right here has a hard edged shadow and it has um, soft area down in here where the color kind of blurred. So what I think I will do for this one is I'm not going to do the shadow yet, but I don't necessarily want a lot of color moving up into that lit area. Uh, so I'm going to put just a little bit of water on this bottom edge, and then I'm going to place water within the shadow part of the petal. And I have my lines for the shadow in there. And it's more just because I'm trying to keep the, oh, I don't want that color. I'm trying to keep the very white part of this petal as mostly white. So I'm now using the Quin Rose and going back to my warm red. And this is, I want this lily to mostly feel pink, not really um, too orangey red. And then, so I'm going to, within this petal, still kind of leave some openings so that it feels like it's got some white areas. And the darkest part of it is to the left side and then down here at the bottom. So, one of the things I think that's really important uh, when you're looking at a photo or you're somewhere in life I'm just trying to mimic what it is, is just really that observation. Take a few seconds and um, look at it and say to yourself, okay, so it's kind of this color, it's got the darkest value here, you know, and just instead of just jumping in, take a few seconds and really observe what you're seeing. My brush is all warped. Okay, so there's a little bit of color on that side as well. And then I'm going to take my brush, um, it's pretty dry because I just dried it with the towel and just soften this edge just a little bit while it's still slightly damp. And those are real minimal things. If you just painted it like we had done the other petals, no one's probably going to go, oh, that's wrong. It's just, you know, the, the way I'm seeing it, that's the way I wanted to paint it. Um, so I cannot paint here, here, or anything around there now that's still wet. I could add color here, but I think what I will do is show you the next layer on this guy. So um, I will be using the same colors, however I am also going to get out cobalt because if I decide that I want um, my shadows to go a little darker or if I want the value of my red to be a little deeper, I can add some cobalt to it. You could also use a purple if you have a purple um, yeah, this stage, it's still, and actually the majority of it, I don't, I'm not really seeing purple in this water lily. I'm just seeing deeper red. So I'm going to pull out more of my Quin Rose. And then for this particular side, it is, uh, the, um, petal has cupped so it's got a little bit of a turn to the edge so I'm going to just paint it on dry and I'm going to use the Quin Rose and just a touch of the cobalt so that it will still be um, on the red side of that color and I could have switched again to my smaller brush at this point um, the 
outside edge of where it turns is this hard edge right here that I'm doing. And so I'm going to paint that on and then I'm going to bring water right up next to it while it's wet. And some of that color will blur down into this water. So you have to be careful that your brush is not too wet when you go to do that. Because I want it to feel like it has a little bit of a glow on this side of that petal. Okay. Um, this one right here, I, need to, I think I need to dry that. Okay, I'll do this one. This one is, um, it's got a shadow right here and a little bit of a shadow right here and they're harder edged shadows. So I am again going to come in with the color and just paint it around that lily petal and bring in just, there's a tiny little shadow down here at the bottom. So when I say hard edge shadow, these both have their hard edged, but you may find a shadow. Um, there are both cast shadows and form shadows. And form shadows are the shadows that are going to help make something look round or have a, a shape to them, not be flat. And form shadows are soft edged. So if you feel like something is, is not flat, or not flat, not rounded, it's because um, everything probably is uh, either one value or it's sort of hard edged. Sometimes you can have a um, cast shadow that is caused by another petal that may have a hard edge and a soft edge because of how far away it is or um, maybe something is causing the object that's casting the shadow to move a little bit, which could create the shadow being a little soft edged. Um, I need to just go ahead and dry this right quick and then I can show you a couple more shadows. And um, then I want to do some down here, but I'll have you guys go back and you can work on some of your petals or all of that before we go on to the, the reflection in the water. Because the, after looking at my video last week, I was looking at it again and some of um, what I was seeing at the time was because it was still wet and you really just need to put your painting away from you and across the room or whatever and look at it because um, you usually see things when you step back from it and just looking at it I realized my shadow doesn't necessarily have to go as dark as this one but it definitely needs to go darker so we're going to do more down there. So let me dry this right quick and then um, we will go on. So the shadow that's back here, um, it's somewhat hard edged, but it's really light. There's not a really strong shadow on this one. So I'm going to put um, a little bit of water up here because it's not very hard edged up in there. And then I will use, I need to get out more. Um, I'll use the Quin Rose and Cobalt, but I'm going to add just a little water to it because I don't want it as dark and actually just maybe a touch of the warm red. All right. So bring that around and then I feel like it's still just a little bit um, dark. So I'm going to add a little water to it. and then bring it down in here. Okay. All right, so um, this part of the shadow on this one is a little hard edged and then this side up here remained a little softer. Um, and I let everyone know that the petals I've already painted, I did earlier, so I, I have it on the video, so it'll be available later, so. Um, Okay, so I think, let me do one more since um, everybody is here and then I will um, come around and see what you guys need. So this one that I painted, 
Maybe it's just a little bit damp. Let me dry it and then I can show you the dark shadow on it. So on this, in the shadow, actually, my the first color that I put down, it um, moved up toward where I put the water and ended up with a hard edge because I did not put my water up all the way to the end of the shadow. So I'm going to take a brush and just soften that edge right quick before I place the shadow in there. Just so I'm trying to get the shadow to look like I want it to. And let's see, it moved a little bit right there as well. Come on. And then I have to dry it. One more second. Okay, because otherwise it could bleed and then it doesn't. All right, so the um, the shadow that is on this lily is it does go almost purple right up in here. So I said I didn't see any purple, but as I'm looking at it more, this um, petal right here has a, it feels almost purple. It's kind of muted. It's not really intense. Um, and then over in here, this feels a little purple, and actually at the tip of the shadow, which is right up in here, there's some yellow in it. So, uh, but it's muted. So I am going to use my three colors I have out, the cobalt, the new gamboge, actually I have four colors, but the cobalt, the new gamboge, and the twin rose, and I'll make a purple. Let me get it. Too much Almost. red. Oops. Cobalt, uh, New Gamboge, and Quinn Rose. And I need more cobalt. Okay. So the purple that I um, made is, mm, I guess it's sort of in the middle. It's not too blue, it's not too red, but you could, you could vary it so that it's got some, it's a little redder if you want. And then I'm going to take, Clean my brush just a little bit because I want to start with the yellow on my brush. And before I touch the paper though, I'm going to touch into the purple. So I'm going to get out just a little more New Gamboge. And now that I have the New Gamboge on my brush, then I can just kind of barely touch into the purple so that I get, it's a, it'll be a muted yellow. And it's actually probably a little too dark. So I'm getting wiped down just a touch. All right, so then as I'm coming down, I'm going to go to more purple. Maybe touch it in there just a little bit. And then as I'm getting farther down, now I'm going to go more purple and touch into the Quinn Rose just a little bit so that I'm varying it as I'm coming down. And then this is actually pretty too dark right in here. So I went back and got some more of the Quinn Rose and my Cobalt. And then because I don't want this petal to feel purple per se, I'm going to start changing it into the Rose color. And maybe just a touch of the Warm Red. Just to Give it some variety. And I still want this to fill the lightest area, so I'm going to put some water in there. So I'll paint that around, and before my color is dry, I will come back with a little clear water. And I dried my brush a little bit because I don't want this too wet. Mm -hmm. And this clear water will help this petal feel like it's glowing. Um, even though it has the shadow over it. Okay. All right, so um, that is kind of an unusual shadow, and that one has a little more going on than some of these other ones. This last one I will do is this one right here, and this one is um, the Quinn Rose and some Cobalt to give sort of a um, purpley color, and it's uh, hard edged, and then as I come down, I'm going to change to more of the Quinn Rose. And it's pretty dark compared to this value back here, so I need to make sure I have enough paint on my brush. I may have to come back and do it again if it dries too light. Okay, and there's no um, 
soft edge that I'm seeing. I added a little more cobalt to it. And I'm going back to the rose. Oh, there's some mask in there. And then this part, this little piece that's sticking up there, I'm not sure where this shadow is coming from, but it's pretty pink. I'm going to add just a touch of my cobalt to it. It's not quite that pink. And so it's one of the petals casting that. And then as it comes down, it actually gets just a little lighter. So just drying my brush. I took off some of that color that was on my brush. Not that that's a big change, but... And then right here is the last shadow part that's on this petal. And I have to be really careful because this one's still wet, so I'm not actually going to connect it at this point. I would say it would be better not to paint that one and then go and paint this one right away. I would let it dry. Um, so I'll just leave that separation there. Now this may end up being um, not enough of a shadow so once everything starts getting color then I'll know if I need to go back and adjust this one but I need to get the color in around it first. So it's still going to be putting on a first layer wet and wet for all the petals looking to see where the color is letting it dry and then coming back and starting to add the shadows and um, any petal that you see, like there's one here that has um, some yellow in it, this one had some yellow, there's one here that has some yellow. Um, so I would just look for those as you're putting your color in. And it would be better, again, to keep it kind of light in the beginning and then adjust um, if you need to add layers to it to darken it. So I'll let you guys go get started on yours and then in a little while I'll have you come up and we'll do some more um, color down in the reflection so that we can push that back so it feels like it's part of the water. Any questions so far? Okay. So I'll come around and see what you guys need. Uh, those a, a few in here and there are some warm tones in there this one as I was looking at it and we were just talking about that um, if you're away from it for a little bit and then you come back um, you start to see things and I feel like this one doesn't have enough um, color in it so I want it to be um, brighter pink in the um, on the petal not the shadow necessarily but I'm going to just take clear water this is no fear painting I don't care if my shadow ends up blurring a little bit, I can always go back over it if I need to. But as long as I use a gentle touch, I should be able to just go over and hopefully still keep the shadow where it's at. A little bit of the color is moving, but not a lot. Now if I came in there and I really pushed hard with my brush, 
um, then it could have moved. So now I'm drying the back of my brush and I'm going to just kind of follow that same path that I did earlier and I'll even go over the shadow area with my color so that it feels like I'm working on the petal not um, that I'm worried about the shadow. I'm ignoring the shadow basically. And then there's more pink down in there. And then I'll just um, let that dry. So just taking another, actually I see just a little bit right up in here, just putting another um, wash of color over something can um, change it and it all of a sudden has more um, presence, I guess is, is the way I want to describe it. Okay. So um, as I'm looking at that, I might start adjusting all of these guys. They might all need just a little bit more, but um, it helps to get a first coat on there and get some other things going, and then you can decide, well, do I want to push it more? And I have lately decided that um, I tend to err on the side of giving it more color and more value so that there's a um, stronger... Um, change between the real light stuff and the darker stuff and so um, okay so down here in this area we I did I don't know if you guys did I think I have about three coats of paint and um, so to go down there I'm just enlarging my picture on my tablet a little bit so I can see it better I still like the fact that there's sort of a greeny um, glow under the lily and I don't want to change that, but I'm going to start up here on this side. And um, I've got out cobalt, I've got my Quin Rose, I've got Oriole and Yellow, it's my cooler blue, or cooler blue, cooler yellow, and my warm red. And so my mixes for this area, I will probably make from that. If something changes, I'll let you know. And I'm going to start up under this petal and I think I'm going to try, it's a really kind of muted color, so that's why it's maybe for you guys like, what do I make that out of? Because it's hard to figure out um, what to do. So I think between my three primaries here, I'm going to try the purple and then some yellow. So I make kind of a muddy, muted tone. Now the other way I could have gone, actually I might try that first, is to make a green and then put a little bit of the red in it so that it mutes my green because um, it's, it's in a yellowy area so that's why I'm trying to decide which way I want to go. So I've got a green and then I'll take just a touch of my rose. like this better. All right, so I went back to the other. So I'm using all the same three colors, so it won't matter. I do need to put a little bit of water in the corner because it has just a little bit of a lighter area. Oop. I'm using my brush stand to clean my <laughs> I, I had my phone sitting next to my jars one time. I, I wiped my brush on my phone because I was thinking that it was my sponge and yeah. All right, so I've got just a touch of water in there, and now I'm going to come back with that very muted tone. And maybe I'm going to go a little bluer so that it still feels sort of like a shadow, and there's some right in there. And then it comes down, and it starts to... Um, oh, it doesn't going to say it starts to fade off, but it will over here in just a second. And there's a little bit right under the petal. And I'm going to go over here and get um, kind of dirty yellow to fill in this corner with. Because I want to make sure that there is some color um, change under here so that the lily pad will mm -hmm. stand out. Okay, so I'll leave that 
Um, then there is a light, little bit of light that's catching um, right there. And there, so I think this is really a the outside husk of the lily flower. When it when they're growing, they have um, a husk that's sort of brownish, and then they open up, and that probably goes under the water. So I think that's what we're seeing because there's a very dark um, piece right there. So. Um, I'm going to ignore that part right there and paint um, away from it because later on that, that color will go in. So I'm going to use the same colors I need to get more oriole and yellow out. And it's okay if it gets kind of muddy looking because it's going to go under. And I debated how I wanted to do this section because it is quite a big area. So I think what I'm going to do is wet with my... Mm, mm. Okay, I think I'm going to wet this area just a little bit. And I'll use, use this guy because I can control... Oh, actually, I didn't realize he was in there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to wet away from that. So I'm wetting just the shadow areas that are darker right now, not the lighter part of the reflection. But that lighter part of the reflection, in just a little bit, is going to get um, some color because Right now, this is not reading like it's under the water, so I want to put a little bit of color on it so that it will feel like it's reflecting on the surface. And so then now I'm going to come over to this part that I have ignored so far, except for that first color I put on it. And I think I'll go ahead and put the water on this piece as well. Okay. So I've got water on there. I'm going to, hopefully this will be the last pass I have to make on this. So I want to try to get in my color as best I can um, in a deeper value. And I'm going to come around, I'm starting at the top edge. And then I'm going to change, which I need to get more cobalt out. So that was the cobalt and the oriole and yellow to make sort of a green. And I'm going into my red purple now. We'll see if this is too dark. I'm going to put that in there. It's not bad. Over here, it goes pretty dark right up next to the um, lily pad, and then I'm going to go back to a little more red, so it's a little more magenta as I come down toward the front. Mm. I'm trying to move quickly because um, all of those wet areas are starting to dry. A little bit down in here. Oh, and I totally missed when I put this on earlier that uh, the angle that actually there's a, a light area that comes in here, so you will not see that on my um, painting, even though it's in the shadow. So now I've got a little bit of that darker kind of purpley color, and there is more of that right down in here on this petal. It's catching some of the pink um, from the, this petal above it. And I'm going to go back to the green. So right in here, and there's a very light edge right here. So I'm going to leave that right now because I can come back later and soften that edge. Um, and I'm not going to paint these guys right now or they could blur into that. Um, I may be in trouble over here because this started to dry and I see no um, 
um, highlights on the area that was wet. So I'm going to try to wet it and we'll see if I end up with a bloom. And this area gets pretty dark. So what I'm doing is I got Quin Rose, a touch of my warm red, and some of the purpley blue. And I'm going to go into that area and we'll get a little more of the blue. And then I need to dry this in order to do the next pass that I want to show you guys. And you could do it, um, you could do it the opposite direction too, and I'll explain that in just a second. So let me dry this and then I'll show you what I mean. That's the part that I get to cut out and blur. <laughs> That's the, some, you know, sometimes you think, oh, you just put the video on YouTube, but no, you have to cut things out and add things and change edit. things and edit. And, okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to make this reflection feel like it's a part of the water. And in order to do that, because I have green water, I'm going to take a little bit of a very thin wash of green and put that green over this passage. And um, so it's going to change these colors a little bit. I didn't finish this part right here with this darker shadow, but I'm not going to worry about it. I want you guys to see this. So I would, if I were doing this, um, I would either do this light green first and put it over the whole thing and then come back and adjust my shadow. or um, do it like I'm doing, but I would finish doing the sections before um, adding this. So I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do cobalt and my warm yellow because that's what I was, um, I used ultramarine over here, but I'm going to use cobalt. Um, so let me clean this. And then I will out a decent amount of cobalt. Even though it's going to be light, I want to make sure I have enough. And you can do this with a painting where maybe you have a section and you, or I'll start again. You can do this with a painting where you feel like your main center of focus is not quite in, in the in most important area. So you might have a lot of texture going on in the background and then your center of focus but maybe the center of focus is not quite working. Or maybe you need to push something back so that it's less important. And um, so we're not necessarily doing that, but we are trying to make it less important than the lily. So um, depending on how this comes out, and this is just slightly damp, so I have to be careful, even after all that blow drying. Okay, so I have the new gamboge and my cobalt, and I'm making sort of a warm, ish kind of sagey color and it's very wet so if I tip this right now it's just going to run all down the palette and um, I think what I will do is I'll use my softer brush I'm going to put just a little bit of water over here since it will be touching over there it probably would not be a major issue but um, just to avoid having an issue on this edge. That way the paint I put on here has a place to go without creating a hard edge. All right, so this is about my value. It's not very dark and it will, it will go lighter than that even. And I'm going to go um, right up under there and start down this whole passage and come around and I'm touching the water that I just placed over there and then I'm going to slowly start bringing that color mm -hmm. under there and under here and paint it across it can be a little bluer in places or a little greener depending on how much you have of each color and let's see if I've got that corner. I think I did. And I'm almost out of cobalt that I pulled out, felt like quite a bit. And pull it around. 
And then there is in the water right here, um, this is a little bit of a highlight. Mine is probably too light right now, but I'm not going to paint that with this because that would be more on the surface of the water. I must have a little bit of mask right there because it's resisting the paint. Okay, and then I'll let that dry. And um, when you stand back from it, right now, it does have sort of a muted kind of almost muddy feel to it. But when I stand back from it after this is dry, I bet that this it, um, will feel more like it's part of the water because now it's got that thin coat of um, the same value or same color going across it. Um, yeah, and so I could still make adjustments on top of this if like this area needed to go a little darker or um, if I needed to adjust something, I could still put some color back over that again. Okay, so I will let you guys go work and then um, I'll try to get uh, one of these petals with a little color on there so I can show you the um, water um, part of that. So I'm just going to do a um, quick critique of what I've got going on. And the first things I'm seeing are that um, I want this to be a little warmer, a little yellower down here compared to what is um, in here. So just some of those places I might just put another wash of color. This is not red enough or not you know pink enough down in here. There's a few places where I need to come back with some color over this and add to what's happening down here. So, and even over here, I could put um, a little more pink back in this. So it's, it, it's always for me that going back and forth and um, some of these, even this shadow, I think I may still go a little pinker. And I'm looking at the photo again, instead of, I should be looking at the tablet that I have been using. So let me move this out of the way. Okay because if you go back and forth between two things, it can start to really confuse you, and um, it's usually better just to stick with one. So, um, so I will still be going back and making some adjustments and changing things. One, I wanted to get that first layer on here, so um, basically I painted this just on dry, and I used a little bit of um, the uh, slightly warmer red up here and then the pink, uh, the rose down here. Let, that was starting to dry and I came over here and used some of the rose and then moved down into a deeper, just more Quinn rose down there and then brought it around and then it slowly became uh, a little green. Oh, yeah, if you can get it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did the, oh, that okay. Okay, so um, this is a uh, little pool of water that is sitting on this petal, and so is there some over here. Now these um, little bubbles of water are not as strong as you might get sometimes where you'll see a drop of water on like a leaf. Um, in fact, I have some pictures where certain leaves will resist the water um, and then they really pool. So in order to show this, um, to make it feel like it's, um, and you guys will probably see it better by looking at this right quick. So you can see that um, water that's on there. Oh. And so that is, we're going to use value and color changes to um, make this feel slightly different than the petal that it's sitting on. So a really important thing for this is there is a highlight that sits right up in here and we do not want to lose that highlight. If that highlight's gone, then, then you can try lifting it back, but um, it just it changes the fact that it looks shiny. If, it, if that highlight's gone, it won't look shiny. Um, okay, so if you, don't, if you don't have that on your petal, no one's going to know there's not that you know, that there was water on there. So you could just paint this as a straight petal and not worry about that. Um, so I have the cobalt out 
I will get a little bit of, I think I have enough Quin Rose here. So I'm going to use the Quin Rose and the Cobalt and probably even a little more Cobalt. I want it to be um, kind of toward purple, um, but still have some red. So I'm probably going to put some color on and then drop some more color into that. So I will start with the, hey, I have a smaller brush out. <laughs> Um, That's not wet on wet? It is not. It's dry, but I will be doing some wet on wet because I'm using this as my, sort of my water, basically. Okay. It's, it's going to be my tone for the area, but then I will be um, putting, dropping some color into it. So basically it's called charging in color. Mm -hmm. And um, as I'm coming down, I'm going to change to a little pinker mix. And then I'm going to go even more pink as it comes down here because it almost blends into the petal down in this corner where it's hard to tell even more what it is. And there are some highlights that will eventually become pink, but I probably won't do that tonight because it needs to dry. So any of these little pieces that are white um, and this brush definitely does not hold as much water and paint. I'm missing the larger brush. Um, any of these pieces down here that are highlights that are a little lighter, you could mask those and then you don't have to think about trying to paint around them because right now I'm having to really slow down to paint around that. And, um, oops, not that color. There's just a touch of a yellowy feel right in here. So I'm going to put that in. It's a little more muted right in there and then it goes back to the um, purpley color. Let me finish this edge. And I can't charge it because this is already drying. I should be using a bigger brush than what this one is. Maybe not as big as my big one, but, um, and then there is a, sorry about my hand, there's a um, darker line that has a highlight on one side of it, right on this edge, I can't see where it's going, okay, um, and then the patch that I left open right here is a light kind of bluey purple. Mm -hmm. um, and if I could charge into that, charging means basically that this is still wet and you take color and you just kind of touch it in there and it moves into that area that you've just painted. And it blends the colors on the paper. So I, um, if I could have charged into that because it is too dry to do that, I would have pushed more of the burgundy kind of red up in here and a little more pink whoops, down in that area. So because it was starting to dry, I can't do that. I'm going to dry it right quick and then um, I will add, ooh, What color would you have charged it with? Um, kind of a burgundy purple up here oh, okay. and then a pinky, more pink down in here. So I wanted sort of a muted, sort of purpley color for the, the basic look of the water, but then I wanted to add um, a little bit more on the edges to give it more of a feeling like it's on that petal with the pinks and some of that. So let me see. Alright, so it's sort of dry. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to do is, and I normally wouldn't do this until the end, but I just want you guys to see that sometimes it just takes a little line to make something look like it's got some depth to it. So right, and I'm using cobalt, my Quinn Rose, I made a purple, and then I went and got just a little bit of yellow on there because I want it to be a little more muted. If I just take and put a little bit of a darker line right on that edge, all of a sudden mm -hmm. that pushes it and makes it, and especially a rounded edge, yep. it makes it feel like it's got some volume mm -hmm. to it. So when you're looking at water that is bubbled like that, if you can find just those little edges, um, 
And it's kind of a little blurred on that side. I'm not quite seeing it. It's probably here as well. So I could take um, that same thing and add oops, just a touch maybe a little bit over here. It's not going to be as dramatic because I also need to add some more color. So I'm going to go to my number 16 brush because this That's will incredible. hold. Yeah, it's, it's amazing wow. how just that little bit um, can make a difference. So this is a lighter purple. Right now this is a little, this whole area is a little too light. Um, so I am going to try, I'm going to add water and then do what I said I was going to do a few seconds ago. And you can see maybe when I do this this time that having the right size brush can make a difference because this one holds more water and paint and so this whole area will stay wet a little longer now because I am putting on more water to start than that other, this was a number 10 and this is a 16. Okay, so now this is, the water is actually pooled a little bit because it's so wet. So I'm going to take um, my Quin Rose, a little bit of the Cobalt, and maybe a touch more of the Cobalt, and this is going to go at this upper edge. So I'm basically charging in, but I'm not going to get the color um, blending that would happen if you start with your base color being wet. And then down here I am using more of the Quinn Rose. In fact, I'm just going to go get quite a bit of the Quinn Rose. And I'm trying to still go around those little highlights and see if I can get some depth that way. Okay, and then this edge. Paint, work with me. Needs a little more. So usually your edges are going to have a little more um, value in there, and then it'll be a little more. Um, lighter toward the center area. And let's see if I can put just a touch more in here because then the um, this piece right here when it goes purple will can be lighter than the area around it. Okay, and then back behind. Ooh. Dirty brush. Okay. Back behind. I'm going to get, so I've made a green and I'm putting just a touch of the rose in there. Back behind here. This is darker. And there is a highlight that where the water actually, the bubble of water is connected to the water behind it. It's really kind of like it's overlapping the petal and it's connected back here and I don't quite have those shapes right because I didn't remember to um, save that shape back there. So yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and this needs to go darker on my, yeah, it's not quite dark enough, in here. This um, part of the petal, which I can do um, because it's dry enough. So back in here, this still needs to get more color. And then I will use some water to um, fade this area. Whoops, too dry or too wet. So that it will help with that highlight right there. Okay. Um, so then the other part is that this piece right here needs to get a little bit of purple. And I think I have a really 
actually there is a really good purple. I would not go out and buy it just for this, but um, Daniel Smith makes a, um, it's lilac is its color, and it is that purple. It is very, um, but it's a little opaque as well. So, so I'm going to take just a touch of water because I don't want this to get too dark. And really, I should dry this before I paint this in, so hopefully it will not move too much into the area around it. Okay. And then it would be a matter of, do I need to change anything in here? There's probably just a teeny tiny touch of yellow in, in this highlight that's on this edge, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, these need to be slightly highlighted, or not highlighted, a little bit of color put in them. Um, yeah, so, um, and I would probably, that's, that's okay, but there's still like, this back edge, if I were looking at it a little longer, needs a little more value back here to make that part push back and so just again it's um, just a little bit of putting color on adding color here taking color out, you know off if need be um, and I actually think that in order to make this feel just a little more highlighted pulling a little bit of that center off and making it just a little lighter might help like it's shiny so um, um, so yeah so if I were going to and unfortunately it's almost nine so I don't want to hold you guys up um, but if I were going to do anything in here uh, just right quick I would um, put more pink down in part of this and I would change this to a little warmer yellow. Just so that it will catch that glow mm -hmm. just a little more. So some of those things, and that was just putting on a little bit of color and then using clear water next to it to blur it. And I still have to darken these guys. I haven't darkened them yet. But um, so it'll just be a little bit of um, adding some color and some value here and there to slowly change anything that I've already got. If you're thinking something needs to be adjusted slightly, like, oh, it looks like it's a little warmer yellow, you can do that with a thin wash of color and then either use a little water or um, just let it fade into the area around it. So that already I'm liking better and then this still needs to get that dark um, color in there. And um, like I said I will try to get the my finish of this out but it may not be for a couple of weeks and it, it may not be until the middle of September.